Welcome to Counters. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at accounts payable turnover ratio or payable turnover ratio or creditors turnover ratio. These terms are used interchangeably. In our other lesson, we looked at accounts payable payments period or creditors payments period. That one is closely related to this one and you might wanna check that one out as well. So what is accounts payable turnover ratio? Well, this ratio basically measures how many times on average in a given period an entity pays its creditors. A higher turnover ratio indicates that the entity is paying its creditors more times in the period, okay? So that is accounts payable turnover ratio. Entities with greater negotiation powers may be able to secure favorable credit terms with their suppliers, meaning that they will have more days to settle accounts with suppliers. As a result, their creditors turnover ratio may be low, okay? So a high creditors turnover ratio or accounts payable turnover ratio indicates that the entity is paying their creditors more times in a given period and it's usually within one year, okay? So it means that it's paying them more times, which can look favorable to potential suppliers and potential investors to say that these guys are paying on time. But if an entity has got greater negotiation powers, if it negotiates well with its creditors, it may be able to secure longer credit period. That means it will only have to pay a few times per year. So you need to take note of that when you're analyzing such a ratio. Caution should however be exercised because a low creditors turnover ratio could signal liquidity problems to suppliers and potential investors. So like I mentioned, an entity might have a low creditors turnover ratio, but it could be due to favorable credit terms with suppliers who say you can take longer to pay us back. That is why they will have a low turnover ratio, meaning that they're paying their suppliers fewer times in a given period. But if it's low, it could also mean that there are liquidity problems within the company, that it's struggling to pay back its creditors, okay? So you have to take note of that as well, like I mentioned before. So what is the formula for the accounts payable turnover ratio? We're going to look at the formula and quickly go through an example which will help you understand this ratio greatly. So here it is. Accounts payable turnover ratio is net credit purchases divided by average accounts payable. Now the numerator here is net credit purchases. Others will use cost of sales or cost of goods sold. But an accurate one or a better one to use is the net credit purchases, meaning whatever we have purchased during this specific period. Remember, cost of goods sold might not be the actual amount of goods we purchased during this specific period. We could have purchased it last year when we had opening inventory and things like those. So net credit purchases is whatever we purchased during this period. And then we divide that by average accounts payable. Now, again, other formulas might use accounts payable and not average accounts payable. So we're using it here, average accounts payable. So that's just a variation of the formula. So how do we get average accounts payable? Well, it's very easy. It's accounts payable at the beginning of the year plus accounts payable at the end of the year. And then we divide that answer by two, okay? So accounts payable at the beginning of the year is the same as accounts payable at the end of the previous year, okay? So if you have, for instance, 2017 and 2018, and you are calculating the accounts payable turnover ratio for 2018, the average accounts payable will be the accounts payable at the end of 2017 plus the accounts payable at the end of 2018, which you'll get in the balance sheet or the statement of financial position. And then you divide the two together and you will get the average accounts payable. And you'll see that when you go through an example just now. So here's the example. We are given the balance sheet or the statement of financial position of a company, but we only have the equity and liabilities portion because we don't need the assets portion. And then here we are given the income statement as well. Okay. And what are we asked to do? We are asked to calculate the accounts payable turnover ratio of the company. Okay. So what is our formula for the accounts payable turnover ratio again? Well, it's net credit purchases divided by average accounts payable. Okay, net credit purchases. So what is our purchases for the year? Like I said, others will use this one here, cost of goods sold or the cost of sales of 475,000 Rand. But we don't know if we purchased all of these this year, okay? You could have had opening inventory at the beginning of the year. 
or work in progress and things like those that's why we prefer to use or the better one a better measure would be to use the net credit purchases so how do we get the net credit purchases well you might be given in your question and that's what you'd use but here we are told that the credit purchases is 80 percent of the cost of sales so 80 percent of the cost of sales or the cost of goods sold is the credit purchases during the period so let's calculate that 475,000 rand which is the cost of goods sold times 80% will give you 380,000 rand. So here we had to calculate the credit purchases. You might be given yours. So we have the credit purchases of 380,000 rand. So we have our numerator. Now our denominator average accounts payable. We get that under equity and liabilities, under liabilities, under the current liability section. And here we have accounts payable. We have 2017 on the right hand side and 2018 on the left hand side. So we're going to add the two together, 30,000 plus 33,000, and we divide that by two, and it will give us our average accounts payable, okay? And it gives us the answer of 31,500 rand. Now that we have our numerator and our denominator, we can get our accounts payable turnover ratio, which is the 380,000 rand credit purchases divided by 31,500 rand average accounts payable. And it gives us 12.06. So what does this 12.06 mean? And like with any other ratio, and I always mention this, it is useless in and of itself if you're not going to have any comparative figure with it. Here we can compare this to the industry average if you are given the industry average or you can compare it to your competitor or your competitors you can also look at the trend over the years okay so you can see over the past two years or the past three years over the past five years and so forth you can compare it and see are we doing better or are we doing worse what does this ratio actually mean for us okay so for instance if the previous year was 15 and now it's 12.06 what does it mean it means last year we're paying our creditors faster or more quickly because we're paying them 15 times and now we are only paying them 12.06 times okay so that is exactly how you interpret this one here so like i said it has decreased that could be good it could be bad so if it has decreased what is the possible explanation it could mean that you are unable to pay your creditors when the payment becomes due or you're struggling with your finances mean, meaning you are going through liquidity problems or it could mean that you're able to secure favorable terms with your suppliers or with your creditors you're able to 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 have a longer period for you to pay them that you don't have to pay them as fast as you had to last year okay so that is the possible ways that you can in analyze and interpret this ratio and that is how you compare them i hope this lesson has made sense i hope you have gained value from this lesson and like i said check out the other lesson on the creditors payment period and you'll see its relationship to this one here otherwise if you have gained value from this lesson if you have learned something please subscribe to our channel like this video and share it to those you think it might help till next time Cheers.